Um, to me, the art of realism is more than a charity. You know, it's 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 a way of helping people, and. Y if you know some for some people without the art of Elysium, they they're just regular human beings. Um, you know, art of Elysium has helped me be me. Uh, if that makes sense, uh, you know, it helps me being just who I am and just as an artist, you know. Uh, and for some people, that's different. You know, for some people, it could be fashion. It could be. Uh, making music videos or whatever they make, you know, or but it's more than just, you know, a gra glamorous, uh, sorry, a glamorous life, you know. It's more than this. It's it's about having fun and being who you are and discovering uh, who, what makes you as a person. Uh, I know that's what the art of Lisa has done for me, and developing me and to be a multicultural character where I can go anywhere and be loved and, and understand people. Uh, I, I think it's hard to grasp that and say that in a few words, but if you look at the art of Elysium from the outside, you understand, and you look at the people that have touched, you understand what the art of Elysium means, and it's just more than words, you know. It's, 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 I mean, how do you describe, I mean, it's the same thing as describing how, you know, those people who are just truly amazing what they do. How do you describe that, you know? You can't describe that because it's just far beyond description, you know? Uh, I mean, how do you describe Michael Phelps's talent? You know, you can't describe that because it's just so good. That's the same thing with Art of Elysium, you know? How do you describe Art of Elysium? I don't know, I can't tell you. I, you just have to be here. You have to be here and see what they do. Then you can say, okay, now I understand it because in words, it's far beyond my, even my understanding. You know, I'm just here because I love being here. You know, it's just, it's just, you know, this is Art of Elysium. Um, I met the Art of Elysium when I was diagnosed with cancer. And they would come into my room and do arts and crafts with me and sing. How long have you been involved with the charity? Um, for about, I've been involved with the charity for about five months now. Um, what fun art activities have you participated in? Um, the art that I've done with Art of Elysium, I have made an Olympic torch, I have made a banner, I made shoes, and I did a documentary. Can you talk a little bit about your documentary? Yeah, um, they came in between my, I had, I had to do four rounds of chemotherapy, they came between my second and my third, and um, they had asked me all these questions about when I was diagnosed, about my family, what my hobbies were, and they followed my journey until about after my third round of chemotherapy. Um, how, how did that experience and the other programs that you've done with the Art of Elysium help you deal with your hospitalization and your treatments? It helped me deal with it because it kept, really kept my mind off of what was going on. Like It helped me cope with my sickness. Um, can you tell us about a time when you felt strong when facing the challenge? Um, well, I am a like true believer in God, so when I was diagnosed with cancer, I didn't like, usually people like think the worst, but I thought the best and I knew I was going to make it, so I felt strong through the whole thing. Um, can you talk a little bit about why you decided to raise money for the Art of Elysium and, and that experience? Well, the, we have a, um, an at-home rivalry game, a football game for our school, and they're really helpful with what I've been going through. So I had told them that um, about you guys, about Art of Elysium, and they said that they would um, raise $1 per ticket purchased for the game, and it raised a lot of money. <laughs> so there were 3,000 people that attended? Yes, there's a lot of people there.
for me, I know what has expired. Officially declares that Elvish Leopard III will be the new CEO of Santa Inc. Who is this? <laughs> no. And there's a camera. Oh, it's recording? I thought it was the camera. Hold on. Wait, Jacques, this is Maggie. Maggie. The crazy is Maggie. Yeah. Yeah. So I like that. It's probably going to go this way, right? Next week, I'm going to run the piece. Well, the page is looking pretty blank right now. Aww. Aww. Yeah. My name is Jacques and I'm 22. So yeah, we're many <laughs> Alright. I like to paint. Uh, I like to draw. Eat. I think there's an art and a culture to eating. Uh, sleep, you know, those are, that's a very good thing too. Uh, chill, some people don't know the art of chilling. Once you've learned that, you can master your chilling, maximize your efficiency to your chillingness. Uh, My name is Aaron and I'm nine. Mom, what's your name? My name is Latanya. Um, can you share what your hobbies are? My hobbies, I like to double dutch and I like to ride my bike and, and I also like to swim. Okay, so this is my old stuff there. Okay. Right, for the top or of the this piece. piece. <laughs> yeah, one second. Oh, here, you would glue right, right there. All the way. It's done? No, no she's throwing it right. her sparkly cake. <laughs> um, how did you get to know about the art of Elysium? Well, Erin spent some time in the hospital this summer and while she was there every week someone from the Art of Elysium came and they uh, did a lot of activities with her, art projects, they brought musicians um, and they brought actors and so we came to expect them and to look forward to them coming every week when she was in the hospital. How long um, have y'all been involved with the charity? Since July. Since July? Um, what fun activities have y'all participated in with the Art of Elysium? Um, I went to the party that they had, and I've been... Tell them about your song. I wrote a song and did a music video for them, and... You did some acting? And I did... And I did acting with the uh, with the actors that came every week. And art projects. And art projects. You know what I just thought about? I know the music video. I double dutch. I like to double dutch. I, I, I know the music video. I'm putting it all together right now. Mm -hmm. <laughs> She's the founder of a charity. I, I didn't jump <laughs> oh. I did not know the double dutch. Like Even when I watched the music video, i got to be honest, I didn't know what the double dutch was. <laughs> I just thought it was a cute little phrase. <laughs> 
actually when Aaron was in ICU, um, Nora came with a musician and they wrote a song and uh, they put it to music and did a video. So. It's I loved it. It was at Little Pieces of Heaven. That's the party <laughs> right. you were talking about. Right. Um, how did the Art of Belief team help face and deal with your hospitalization? They meet me every time they would come every week. They would always make me smile and feel better. How did it help you, Mom? Um, just to see her smile based on them coming and what they did and the time that they took out with her, um, it, it warmed my heart and made me feel much better um, to know that even though we were going through a difficult time, um, that there were people who actually cared and uh, took the time to come to the hospital to uh, engage the children in activities and it her smiling put a smile on my face as well. So, um, can you tell us about a time when you felt strong when facing a challenge? Well, when I had my surgery, I felt strong because I was really scared about having surgery. And Erin, through this all, um, she's a tough little girl, and she's faced all the, the whole situation. She's been very brave and very courageous, and she's my hero. Uh, let's see. So uh, you know what? Uh, I'm working with the artist. Oh, you're the new crew. We are pizza restrict. Change and I realized I didn't have my outfit, so I put my clothes back. <laughs> I was already wearing. Do the thing. Good, good. Did a good job. Thank you. Yeah. Okay. You're like a supermodel. <laughs> Okay, this is, let's cut the top. This is your big close-up right here. Wow, give me your best. And you're nailing. Hi, my name is Annalicia. I'm 19 years old. Um, can you tell us what your hobbies are? My hobbies are shopping, hanging out with friends, um, sightseeing, hanging out, going different places, traveling, meeting new people. Um, how did you get to know the Art of Elysium? I got to know the Art of Elysium through my, um, my hospital, the clinic there, the pediatrics oncology. And how long have you been involved with the charity? I've been involved with the Art of Elysium for about five and a half months now through all my treatments, so it's been exciting. What fun activities have you done with the charity? Fun activities we did were creating um, objects out of wood and putting them together and making different crafts and stuff like that and pieces. Nice. Um, how did the Art of Elysium help you during your hospitalization? The Art of Museum helped me throughout my hospitalization because they were really positive and they just told me to help me to stay um, hopeful and faithful throughout my recovery and my procedures. And they were always there for me when I was having chemo and stuff like that. So it was, it was always positive energy. About what kinds of things did, when they were there, like what kind of things were they doing with you? Well, we would work on art and pieces like that. Um, creating things to, um, well, pieces and stuff like that to keep our mind off of what was going on around us in the hospital. So you know, so you kind of yeah, I mean, we could, we could oh, right. You want to do the same color or do you want to do like a darker base? I'm going to just stick the brown on there if you want. <laughs> 
I feel like it's relating to me. Because you're such a fine figure, something now that can bridge it. Once I Thank you. Good luck. Yeah. It is. I'm telling you, it's hot. You see it? Okay. 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 Hi, my name is Ahaji Baptist and I'm 16. Um, my hobbies are basketball, I love acting, I like to sing. I love to rap. Um, I love to draw. Yeah. You're amazing. Thank you. How did you get to know the art of Elysium? Um, I've got to know the art of Elysium through Leslie. Um, I'm in a teen power group for diabetics, teen diabetics. Um, Leslie has been there for me for about three years. She's always been there to call my mom and ask if I would be able to do some type of activity or if I would love to go on some type of retreats. And um, she's there every week on Wednesday at the power group and she brings an activity for us and it's pretty fun. Can this chair go up higher? Yeah, can you move me up? You're taller than me. Okay. Um, what fun activities have you done with the Art of Elysium? Um, Fun activities I've done with Art of Elysium are boxing, I've done yoga. Um, we've had a guy actually come in and he was a song singer-songwriter and I've written music with him. Um, uh, we've done a lot. We've done graffiti art, we've done paper mache, we've done, like now we're doing, we're making puppets and it's pretty fun. Um, how did the Art of Elysium help you during your treatments? Um, well, the Art of Elysium helped me because when I've joined the teen program group, um, I've found other friends that are diabetic, and usually before that, I felt that I was alone and no one knew that I was, what I was going through, but when I got there, everyone was almost going through the exact same thing, so. Can you tell us about a time when you felt strong when facing a challenge? Um, I felt strong. Um, there was a challenge um, when I was first diagnosed. Um, I didn't know my dad, he was asking me if I wanted to go to the doctor. And like I, I was scared to go because I was scared of what they might say when I was first diagnosed. So um, I consider that to be for me being really strong for going in the first place. Anything else you want to say? Um, I just really appreciate what the Art of Elysium has done for me and helping me through the process of being a diabetic and making it more fun and easier. Yeah. Well, yeah. I don't think, uh, do, you want to color, do you want to cover this so that you yeah. bring it yeah. Yeah, so you don't see that through the yeah. During the group with the friends that are diabetic, um, we talk in the beginning so we all get to know each other and we all have a lot in common outside of the diabetes too. Um, like uh, there's a kid in the group now, he plays basketball, even though he's a little younger than me, he plays basketball. We go through the same exact struggles. Mom doesn't want to let us play but because of our blood sugars, but then we find ways to help each other out and make things easier for both of us and all of us. <laughs> When new kids come in, we help comfort them and let them know that they're not alone and that they can talk to us anytime that they need to. And we actually make it fun for them too because usually everyone comes in shy and doesn't want to participate sometimes, but we they end up breaking out of their shell and we all have a good time. What does her voice sound like? I I love to write. Writing releases a lot of emotions that are kept inside of me, and um, I'm actually writing a book right now. What is your book about? 
My book um, kind of chronicles some stories about my health situation over the past 15 years, but I don't like to directly talk about myself, so I go into stories of other people that I've met through um, my, hydro my hydrocephalus support group, and sorry if I stuttered, should I do it again? Okay. With my hydrocephalus support group, I've met a lot of people that have a similar condition to mine, but have different experiences and even worse situations because they've had seizures or strokes. And um, just working with them really showed me a lot about myself, too, and how strong they are reflects within how I want to... I'm sorry. <laughs> it's warm up in that head. Uh, hold on, hold on. My book is about my journey over the past 15 years um, from when I had a brain tumor and 12 brain surgeries from hydrocephalus, which is a condition where there's too much cerebral spinal fluid on your head. And they put a shunt in, but the shunts tend to break a lot, and so you have to have a brain surgery each time. And so I started a support group with the Hydrocephalus Association, and that allowed me to meet other people with my condition. And through meeting them and them sharing their stories, I realized that I was now okay with sharing my story, whereas before I would always hide it. And um, so my book kind of is a little chronological, but it goes into these different people's stories and how they reflect on me and how they help me grow and just, it's, come, it's not all planned out yet, it's a work in progress, but that's how I work with art, it kind of, I have an idea and it forms itself and it turns into something completely different in the end, so that will. Um, how did you get to know the art of Elysium and how long have you been involved? So I came to know the art of Elysium because Jen met my mom, I think at, um, I'll redo this, but it was at some like art bronzing thing. What was it called? The factory? It was the foundry. The foundry. So I met Art of Elysium because my mom um, knew Jennifer through the foundry and they were doing some art projects. And um, she came to visit me in the hospital when I had my brain tumor. And there's a really great picture with that that you guys can intercut right here. So I'm so sorry. <laughs> You're great, honey. Don't be sorry. Okay. You realize we're using all the stuff. Are you? I'm so sorry. You know, gonna, that's like the best stuff is when you're like, I'm so sorry. You're going to cut the picture here. I'm going to totally use all that. Just so you know. Okay. <laughs> Should I start over with the Art of Lyceum thing? Okay, so I met the Art of Lyceum through my mom because she worked with Jen at the Foundry and they were working on some art projects and met each other. And... Um, so Jen ended up coming to the hospital to visit me when I was eight, and I had a brain tumor, and there's a really great picture where she's just like laughing and smiling, and um, I have like this bandage on my head, and it's kind of like this grimace smile, because you know I was in a lot of pain, but I was just really happy that she was there, and you snuck in, or Jen snuck in um, spaghetti into the ICU, and that just like made my day because hospital food sucks and you can't eat because you're nauseous from having all of the surgeries and there's too much cerebral spinal fluid so it creates pressure and nausea and so you throw everything up but then when you finally can eat you're starving and just spaghetti it was just amazing but she snuck in you can't sneak spaghetti into the ICU but, um, so then after that, I worked with Art of Elysium, coming into different hospital projects and volunteering, and um, go to their galas and speak on stage sometimes and try and just inspire the celebrities to give back so that they know that they're working for something that is a beautiful cause and that making a child smile is the best thing that they can do for someone that's in pain in the hospital. Yeah. Oh, sorry. So I totally forgot. Oh, she's the one. Princess Cassie. Nice. Sorry. 
Um, can you talk about some of the art workshops, music workshops, specifically fashion workshops that you've done through the Art of Elysium? With the Art of Elysium, I've done several projects. Um, going into the hospitals, I've mostly done arts and crafts because I think that interacting with paint or cutting stuff and making a collage is just really simple and pretty for the kid to be able to do. It's not complicated so they don't ever feel inadequate or something. But um, doing actual workshops with the Art of Elysium, I've come in and they actually had Boucheron. Um, they were going to design a ring. And so I started designing one ring that I had thought about before and it was like this black rose and I spent the entire hour on it and then the last minute I just threw together this little tiny feather thing that was really pretty but I hadn't thought about it and I think that that's how most of my art comes to be is just not planned it's just whatever happens subconsciously I guess coming out and that's the one that they chose to make a ring for and um, we went to an art show and they auctioned it off and it went for $15,000 and that went towards Art of Elysium and helping other kids but it was just really great to see it come from an idea and then into an actual ring that someone can wear. I think um, Amy Smart was commenting on it when, or she was wearing it I think. Because you want them to look kind of the, like their big black, like... The black tape totally makes it seamless. Oh, uh, that would be cool. Um, so with Art of Elysium, today we're working on puppets. That was based on a play that one of the kids wrote, one of the young adults wrote, and um, he has a seizure, and so then after he wakes up, he goes into this puppet world. And I really identify with that because there's this reality world that everyone else sees and that you're trying to be, but then the rest of the time you're kind of battling these inner demons with your physical issues and, um, and emotional issues. And so being able to kind of make a surreal landscape with these puppets creates... So I really identify with what he was trying to say in the play because you're kind of in this, when you have a condition, you portray yourself in one side, which is this side, the real world that everyone sees and you try and be normal, but then on the other side you have this like s hidden battle within yourself with your emotions, with your physical abilities and um, this surreal aspect of the puppets coming to life and having this battle against this great evil really is symbolic for how kids feel when they're in the hospital and trying to stay with themselves throughout all these traumatic things happening to them. It's really good. Really, really, really good. Uh, can you tell us a time when you felt strong when facing a challenge like with your medical issues? Um, well, it's kind of funny because everyone thinks that like brain surgery is crazy and stuff, but it's kind of normal to me now. And I I think that in part developed because I see my little brother and my mom see me sick and they see me go into the hospital and have to have these like brain surgeries. Um, and so I like to protect them and so by being brave and going in for the surgeries and pretending like it's not a big deal, it's like, yeah, whatever, like, they're going to shave my head and do all this stuff in there. That by being brave allows them to be okay with the situation and not feel sad or feel hurt by it. Would you say that through your art that you're able to express that as opposed to sharing it with your family? Express what? Those fears, like what, where you're putting on a strong face for everybody else? In my writing, I definitely do. Oh, sorry, I'll say it. Um, I express myself through my art in that my writing 
I don't really show it to people, and that's why this has been really hard to write the book, because you have to show it to people to sell a book. But um, I really express my fears in that I'm not scared of the surgery itself. I'm scared of not waking up. I'm scared of not being myself on the other side. Like some of the other kids with my condition, like I said, had a stroke or have seizures and stuff. And I'm, you know, pretty high functioning. I don't have any issues except for headaches. But um, through art, I always was making a pretty picture because that's what people wanted to see. But now I kind of I'm over that and I'm making art to express what's inside myself and I find these pieces of trash at my mom's warehouse, like an old piece of metal or a piece of wood that's thrown away and it's damaged and in that I see the beauty and a pattern and I paint on that or I'll paint something and then I'll like damage it and that's like the scars that I have, like it's not a pretty perfect picture, it has these real things that make it more beautiful in a sense, make it more pure because there's a, in anthropology, I'm an anthropology student, um, there's different cultures where they have a rug, like there's a Persian rug or a Chinese rug, and after they make this beautiful rug, then they like rip a thread and damage it a little bit, so it lets the evil out. And that's kind of what I, I guess I'm doing symbolically with my art too. Flapped, armor clanked, doors slammed, but every day at exactly one o'clock the class. Yeah. You gotta come up with a song too, like an intro song. It, it takes place in a castle, there's lots of noise, and then there's a the juggler. Yeah, you can definitely be a guard with Tom because he goes to like.
moment. Who's our narrator? It's better than baseball, and basketball, football, and bike riding, playing video games. Oh my goodness! The mouse and the king all could live together. From then on, the king shared. Uh, the king. Uh, <laughs> it's very nice, sort of. Here's the culprit who disturbed the royal <laughs>